Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I want to do a super quick fast and loose uh, watercolor painting using the Ron Ranson palette. I previously uploaded a video where I had taken a pen and ink sketch and used the palette over that and somebody had commented saying they would have liked to see the painting done without the pen and ink there. So I'm going to do a fast and loose version of this. This is um, going to be the same paper. It's Canson 100% cotton, hot press, 140 pound. The palette that I'm using, it is raw sienna, burnt sienna, which is optional for the Ron Ranson palette, uh, burnt umber, alizarin, light red oxide, which I have seen him, and he's deceased now, but I have seen it li listed as um, Indian red instead. Uh, lemon yellow, which I'm going to put some more out in a moment, ultramarine blue, um, some lists add cerulean or thalo blue or other types of blue, and Peyton's gray. So that's what I'm going to work with, and we'll jump right into it. One thing I should mention is that I have seen some lists use um, cadmium yellow instead of lemon yellow. So that's an alternative right there. I'm not going to fully saturate this paper. We're just going to kind of go into it and have fun. And I really want to make this super fast and loose and kind of just give the impression of this scene. So this is my raw sienna coming into the hot press paper. I like to use raw sienna to map out where my grass and land is going to be. I'm going to grab some clean, as it could be, ultramarine, and wash that in. Okay, so, so far we've used two of the colors. I want to make sure I use all of them. I could throw a little bit of alizarin in the sky just for us to see how that is within the palette. Um, I'll throw it in right here. A little bit of ultramarine with a little bit of alizarin. A stronger quantity of it. Okay, now I'm going to take my light red with ultramarine. I'm hoping that the way I have it situated is that you guys can see what I'm mixing as I'm painting. So I like light red and ultramarine for distant mountains. And then I could take burnt sienna to warm it up for the closer portion of those mountains. I'm going to stretch out the paper, so I'm just pressing my binder clip down. And I like to use the back of the brush to flatten it because I could have oils on my hands, especially. Um, being you know bearded the way I am all right we haven't used Payne's gray yet so let's use that I'm going to use that to map out the edge of the water I could throw some um Alizarin in there as well. I'm going to do kind of a full clean off just so I could grab some lemon yellow for 
the grassy areas. And of course, burnt umber, which I can use for, that's pretty straight from the tube. A little bit more solid, closer mountains coming down. I'm not looking at the picture. I'm kind of just making the scene up as I go, but it's based off of the one that I showed you at the very beginning. Let's see, did we use all the colors? We used Payne's Gray, we used Ultramarine, we used Raw Sienna, we used Burnt Sienna, um, Lizarin, Light Red Oxide. Yeah, so we used everything. So now if we want to just kind of accentuate, touch some areas up. We can bring a nice little wash, if I can get a nice wash going, across here. Darken up our edges. I may only use the hake for this one. That's kind of just the bare bones of it. Let's do a dry off, see if we want to play around with anything else. Um, if we wanted to use the rigor, which I'm going to wind up doing, I'm going to take Ultramarine and uh, Burnt Umber. I'm going to feed that in for far distant trees. And since it's wet and wet, they're going to diffuse. And you can go into as much detail as you want. You can go back here, put little trees along those ridges. We can use the very same color and that rigor to do foreground grassland. You can even grab stronger burnt, sorry, raw umber for that edge. Let's do a dry off and we'll take a look and see how it looks. So that was extremely fast and loose, but it was meant to display the um, Ron Ransom palette. Uh, but also a lot of people do find something like this where it's very wet and wet, soft and um, atmospheric, aesthetically pleasing. So this might be something that you want to follow and, um, and kind of, you know, make it your own. For me, uh, if you watch my videos, you'll see that I'll often go wet and wet. And then from there, I will um, do a dry off and then maybe do something crisper on top of it for contrast. I'm going to put little birds in. Just clear up that spot. I'm going to sign it. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you can see that a very limited palette can do a lot. Um, of course, you're always welcome to follow along with one of these paintings, uh, one of these tutorials. If you do, I want you to sign your own name to it. And if somebody wants to buy it from you, you have my permission to sell it. Um, I would love to see you, um, you know, sell paintings and prosper and have fun. Uh, that's what it's all about. Um, if you want to support this channel, please like, subscribe, and I do have a Patreon account linked down below if you would like to support the channel. And I also have an Etsy account if there's ever anything you'd like to purchase. I hope you enjoy. Have a good day. Bye.